Hello everybody. It's been a little while since we brought one of these videos to you, so I thought I'd just do a quick video about some of the flowers you can see blooming in February here in the Arboretum. And so we're going to start with these crocus. These are called tommies. They're bulbs that are planted in the fall and they come up in the spring and they do what we call naturalize. So they spread around through the garden on their own. Um, and on nice warm days, especially warm sunny days, you'll fi find honeybees visiting these even in February. Right here, these tend to bloom earlier in the garden than other places because we have what is called a microclimate. So against this brick wall, it gets really warm. And so uh, we have flowers tend to pop up here earlier uh, than many other places. So this is one of the first signs that spring is on its way. So it's, it's interesting here at a college campus garden, when I started here as the director of the Arboretum, I noticed that we have so much that is of uh, really interesting as far as garden interest for the winter and the fall and the early spring. And that makes sense, right? Because our students aren't on campus as much in the summer. And so since we are an outdoor classroom, we teach horticulture here, it makes sense that we have all these plants that are really interesting um, to learn about in the times when the students are here. Our spring semester starts in January and ends in the first week of April. And so um, our campus features plants that had really cool interest to a garden throughout the year. So we are lucky enough that we have flowers blooming every month of the year here in the Arboretum. And that means that if you're in this area, you can too. They're not all native plants, but um, but they are hardy here. And the ones I'm showing you are not invasive and uh, can add seasonal interest into your gardens and also provide for pollinators on the warm days when honeybees will come out from their hives to go and um, gather food. So here we have Jasminum nudiflorum. This is winter jasmine. You can see the bright green stems, the bright yellow flowers, and even the buds are fairly ornamental. They're red in color and um, add another dimension of seasonal interest here. Eventually, these flowers will stop blooming, but one of the really nice things about this shrub, you can see how it kind of arches over the stone wall here, but one of the nice things about this shrub is that the flowering time is very long, so it's not like Forsythia where it just blooms all at once uh, for a week and then is done. This has a uh, bloom time. It's been blooming since early February and uh, will continue blooming into March. So it has a very long bloom time. It's Jasminum nudiflorum, the winter jasmine. One of the favorites among my students and visitors, uh, it's so photogenic, <laughs> is our the pink pussy willow, the uh, Salix gracilostyla. This is Mount Aso cultivar. And um, you can see the catkins, which are the flowers here on this shrub, are just this really pretty pink, color and it this is a, a willow it's a it's a shrub willow when it finishes blooming it'll have these nice blue green oval shaped leaves but as this as these flowers progress and age they go from pink to gray and then they actually turn a two-tone red and yellow as their um, pistils and stamens are revealed so this is pink pussy willow uh, or rose gold willow and um, Salix gracilostyla Mount Aso. And here are the flowers of the Jelena witch hazel, Hamamelis ex intermedia. The witch hazel and I could smell this shrub before I walked up to it. The flower fragrance is just um, filling the garden today and you might not expect that with these relatively small flowers but you could see these strap like petals here. Um, again this will 
be covered with honeybees on warm sunny days in the winter, providing a food source for pollinators. Tall shrub, you can see here in our mass just has this cloud of orange flowers on it. Below it, you'll see more flowers. These are winter aconites. This is another bulb that you plant in the fall and it comes up in the spring and it will naturalize through your garden. These are considered toxic and so the deer will not eat these. So winter aconite. Our winter heath has been blooming since November in the conifer garden, the Calabrero conifer garden. And we have pink, as you can see here, they sort of look like little conifers. Nice ground cover, needs well-drained soils. We have the pink and this cream-colored flower here too. So winter heath, Erica exdarliensis. blooms all winter. This is the plant that gets it so we can say that we have flowers every month of the year here in the Ambler Arboretum. Another witch hazel blooming right now is the Hamamelis vernalis, the spring witch hazel, which is native to the southeastern portion of the United States. And it's another relatively tall shrub and it gets covered with these yellow blooms this time of the year. Our native witch hazel, which you can find in the woods around us here, blooms in October and November. So it's another great plant for adding seasonal interest in that off season when people aren't usually thinking about flowers. And then this one, the Hamamelis vernalis, adds this interest in February and into March. Another one with a long bloom time. Sorry about the blurry pictures, it's having trouble picking up on these. It's a little breezy out today, but here's another witch hazel. This is a cultivar of Hamamelis vernalis called amethyst, which features these purple flowers on them in the early spring. So there's another one you might want to consider for your landscape. And we're gonna end today's flower tour with this bloom on the Lanicera fragrantissima, the winter honeysuckle. This is a shrub honeysuckle, and um, not all of the flowers are out yet, but they're starting. And what I love about this one, it is fragrant. It does earn its name, fragrantissima. And if you smell these, they smell just like Fruit Loops. If you remember eating Fruit Loops or have eaten Fruit Loops recently, the fragrance of these smells just like Fruit Loops and it's really delightful. There's honeybees visiting these early flowers right now. So Lanicera fragrantissima, it's just covered in buds, getting ready to bloom when the sun comes out. So thanks for visiting with us. Again, I'm Kathy Salisbury, the director of the Ambler Arboretum of Temple University. And uh, we invite you to follow us on our social media and learn more about the programs we have going on this season by visiting arboretum.temple.edu.